Welcome to Electra Online. So, if we find a planet in a binary star system, does that automatically mean don't start looking for life because it's not possible for that planet to have a stable orbit? Well, not entirely. It is still possible for a planet to have a relatively stable orbit inside a binary star system, but there must be certain conditions that must be met. So, let's take a look. Here we have three possible scenarios two of which could produce a relatively stable orbit for the planet and therefore possibility for life on the planet and the third example, a third case where not likely to find a life on that planet and so let's see what this is and I'm just kind of looking at that, doesn't it kind of look like a, a smiley face? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so what do we have here? We have two stars and the two stars are very close together. Let, let the big D equal the distance between the two stars, and the two stars would then be revolving around what we call the Berry Center. The Berry Center is the center mass of these two stars, and the two stars would simply be revolving around the Berry Center, very close together. And then let's say we have a planet which is far away from the two stars, and we call the distance from the Berry Center to that little planet, we'll call that little d. And it's the kind of rough order of estimate, the orbit of this planet will be stable if the distance from the planet to the barrier center is at least five times the distance between the two stars. Then you would have a relatively stable orbit. A second possibility would be that the two stars are very far apart from one another. And so again, the distance between them is big D. And then you have a planet that is close to one of the two stars, and the distance from the planet to that star is little d. And again, if the second star is far enough away so that the gravitational force between this planet and this star is not as strong, relatively speaking, to the force between this planet and that star, remember that the gravitational force is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. So if this one is much farther away, you square that distance relative to this, the force is so small that it would not have much of an effect on this orbit and you would have a stable orbit. Again, the idea is that the distance between the two stars would be greater than five times the distance between the planet and one of the two stars. Finally, a third case. Here we have the big D, the distance between the two stars, and they would of course be revolving around one another about the Berry Center, and we can put the Berry Center right there, so this star would be going like this, and this star would be going like this. And let's say that the orbit of the planet places it right in between these two stars in such a way that the distance between the st two stars is twice the distance between the planet and one of the stars. That would be a very unstable orbit because here, notice, you'd be pulled in both directions so that the force would then be neutralized, so to speak, and the planet would then would go straight. And then, as this planet moves this way, you'd get close to this planet, you'd be far away from that, and your orbit would not be circular, it would have all kinds of erratic patterns, and sometimes you'd be really close to the star, sometimes you'd be really far away, and it would not be a good place to live on a planet where sometimes the temperatures are 200 degrees, and other times the temperatures are 200 below. And you can see how the, the, the st a situation like this would not be very conducive to having life on a planet. You want stability, and stability can be obtained by those two situations, but not by this one. Now, by seeing this, you may say, well, that means that the vast majority of the time you have a situation where you have stable orbits. Well, that's not entirely true. It's not likely you'd see these types of scenarios often. It's probably more likely that you see this kind of scenario more often. So I would say that if there's a binary star system, there's less of a chance for life existing than if you have a single star in the solar system. And that's probably the way we can look at it. And the third case, if the, if the star on the right-hand side, one star is may, much bigger than the other, then the other star's gravitational pull is not as strong. <laughs> If one star is much bigger than the other, then of course you have a fourth case, you can have a fifth case, and a sixth case, and a seventh case. There's lots of different cases. And yes, if one star is significantly bigger than the other, which could very well happen, and it does happen, then you'd have a whole bunch of other types of scenarios where potentially you could have a good stable orbit, or potentially you cannot. If you're close to the bigger star and far away from the smaller star, then of course the bigger star will have the bigger effect and the smaller star will not have much of an effect. It's kind of like what we have in our own solar system. 
Jupiter, even though it's not a star, is a very big planet. Matter of fact, if Jupiter had been bigger, it could have become a star. And so the effect of Jupiter is definitely felt on the orbit of the Earth, and even though it's much smaller than a star. So even though the star may not be, uh, even if there's a second star and it's far away, it still would have a significant effect. But if you're close to the biggest of the two stars, you'd have less influence on the small star. Again, it, it all depends upon the relative distances. Bigger of the two stars, not the biggest. The bigger of the two stars, that's correct. Grammatically, you are correct. I'm correct. <laughs> uh, well, let's not, we won't argue that one on camera. How's that? 